The mind has an amazing ability to create obstacles for itself. Even when it's doing something that it knows, at least part of it knows, is really good for it. Strengthening your powers of concentration, giving the mind a comfortable place to stay in the present moment, a place where it can stay at home, feel at home, gain nourishment. We've got this practice, and yet the mind keeps finding other things to get in the way. Wanders off in search of interesting sensual pleasures and get worked up about it, being angry about something. All the hindrances, sleepiness, restlessness and anxiety, doubt and uncertainty. And the question is, why do these things have power over the mind? They obviously don't offer any long-term good to the mind. You know, we have a tendency to get fooled by them. One, not recognize them as hindrances, actually, actually think that they're our friends. And so when they come along, they, we fall in with them. I and mean, even though we may know in the abstract that these things are bad for us, when they come, they have their ways of making themselves attractive, or we have ways of making them, making them attractive for us. And so we have to be very careful to watch out for them when they come in and overtake the mind. And sometimes you have to reason with the mind to pull it away, and other times you just simply have to be firm with it. Say, this is a time to settle down. This is not the time for wandering around looking at this, looking at that, or getting involved in different emotions, getting involved in different abstract ideas. We've got a very basic, down-to-earth practice, one that's so easy to underestimate because it is so down-to-earth. And yet, if it's not down-to-earth, how is it going to be? help get you in touch with reality. You've got to learn to recognize distractions for what they are. That's the first step. There are lots of techniques that are given for overcoming sensual desire. If it's sexual desire, they, you can talk, contemplate the 32 parts of the body. If it's just plain old desire for sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, think about all the sensual pleasure you had in the past. Where is it now? And John Swat used to like to ask this question time and again. All the happiness you got from sights and sounds and smells and tastes and tactile sensations, where is that now? It's all gone. It comes and goes. It's extremely superficial. If it really were satisfying, we would have had enough a long time ago. But because it's not satisfying, we keep grabbing more and more and more until we begin to realize that this. In this basket of hot peppers, there's no sweet ones. The antidote for ill will is to reflect on what anger does to you. The Buddha has a nice passage where he talks about how when you're angry you do precisely the things that your enemy would like to see happen to you. You look ugly, you destroy friendships, you destroy things. You get confused as to what's in your own best interest and what's not. Do you really want to do those things to yourself? Do you really, really want to give your enemies that kind of satisfaction? It's one way of looking at it. The other is to simply look at how the mind is burning up, or what somebody else did, and who's getting burned by the, your anger. You're the one that's getting burned. As for sleepiness, drowsiness, whoever attained awakening through sleepiness or drowsiness, whoever attained anything. Extraordinary. Of course, there are times when the body needs to rest, but you have to test your drowsiness first to make sure that it's not just boredom, a subterfuge for distracting you and pulling you off someplace else. If you're sitting and meditating, you get drowsy, get up and walk around. Or if you find one particular way of breathing is making you sleepy, change your breath. If you're getting bored with the breath, start exploring all the precise little details of the breath energy in the body. Go through the toes, one by one by one, the fingers, one by one by one, and all the little parts of the body. Divide the body up into little tiny sections and try to make a survey of every one. 
In other words, give the mind work to do to keep it interested. And many times the cure for restlessness and anxiety is the same thing. Give the mind work to do right here in the present moment. As long as it has the power to think, make it think about what's going on inside. If it doesn't like the breath, you can think about the bones, you can think about any of those 32 parts of the body that you chant about. Until the mind has had enough thinking and it's ready to settle down again. As for doubt and uncertainty, John, John Fung often said it's a lack of truthfulness in ourselves. We don't give ourselves to anything to really test it properly. You say, well, this might be true. Well, is that really true? Well, I really don't know. But you're not willing to put yourself on the line to test it, and so you go around and hold on to your doubts. The only way you can overcome doubt is to test things seriously. Will this work? Will this take, it, take me where I want to go? And then give yourself to the practice. See what it does. We're not, you're not asked to sign on with total conviction to begin with, but you have to give it a fair, op fair chance, fair opportunity. There are so many dilettantes in the world who have opinions about all kinds of things, but haven't really tested anything at all. Their opinions, their knowledge is worthless. If you want to know the truth, you have to be true to the practice. If you want to know the truth about the practice, you have to be true to it. Truth is not a quality of statements as much as it is a quality of, of the mind. So if you want to know the truth, you've got to make yourself into a true person. So when any of these hindrances come along, remind yourself, one, that they are hindrances. All too often sensual desire comes along and says, yes, wouldn't it be nice to have some pretty pictures? Okay, you go with the pretty pictures. Anger comes along. You can see how justified it is. It's e very easy to justify anger. Sleepiness comes. Ah, yes, it's time for the body to get a rest. Restlessness and anxiety come. Yeah, the things you really do have to worry about. Doubt comes. Yeah, this is really wor worthy of doubt. Really unreliable. I mean, your mind can create all sorts of reasons for it to, to jump in with the hindrances, but where do they take you? Think about that. We've been living with these hindrances for so long that we've mistaken them for friends. But ask yourself, are you really satisfied with where you are in life? Would you, would you like something better? Would you like to try something new? Okay, if you're going to try it, really try it. Give yourself to it to see what it can do. Because there are other obstacles that we don't create for ourselves. Aging, illness, and death make it really difficult to practice. And nobody knows how how much time they've got left. One of the few Dharma talks by John Fu, and it was recorded and transcribed, he makes just this point, that you have no idea how much time you've got to practice. And if you fritter your time away, the time that you do have, which is the present moment, you're really going to regret it when you suddenly discover obstacles coming in your way. Seven years after he gave that Dharma talk, he was dead himself, and he was sick in the meantime, many, many times. And many of the people he gave that Dharma talk to are now dead. We're alive. But again, we don't know how much longer it's going to be before we go. So take, a, take advantage of the opportunity that you've got. Be strict with yourself. Okay, This is time to practice. You can't dawdle. You can't dip your toe in and then pull out, and dip your toe in and pull out, you've got to plunge right in to see what the practice can do. And this doesn't mean that you have to rush, rush, rush for the practice. That the practice does have its own rhythms, in terms of when to just be still, when to be inquisitive, when to question things, when to be still again. Well, that's a rhythm you have to discover on your own as you practice what rhythm is working for you. But if you don't give yourself to the practice, you won't be able to discover that rhythm. So to try to give this issue your full attention, what's needed to be done to get the mind to settle down? What's needed to be done? What's needed to understand this process of fabrication that's constantly going on in the mind, in which we create our experience 
out of the raw materials that come from the past. And this process that the Buddha said is so stressful, but it only gives inconstant results, and nothing you can really claim as your own. We have that chant every evening, I'm the owner of my actions. But you're not the owner of it, the results. What are the results? The results are the aggregates, the results are the sense media. And those the Buddha keeps saying, that's anatta, anatta, it's not self, not self. To focus on that issue, what you really have is this process of fabrication that's just work, work, work all the time. And that the work that you do doesn't produce any results that you can hang on to. Unless you master what the Buddha said is that fourth type of karma, fourth type of action. The action that leads to the end of action, which is the Noble Eightfold Path. That puts you in, some, in touch with something that goes beyond the power of fabrication. Because it's not fabricated, it places no weight on the mind at all. So there is that possibility, but to get there requires requires training, heightening your virtue, heightening your concentration, heightening your discernment. So try to be very clear on who your internal friends are, who you want to be spending time with inside, because it really does make a difference. Just because a feeling comes into the mind doesn't mean that it has to be your feeling. See it simply as an event that comes, an event that goes, but it comes from causes and it has its results. And it's up to you to decide which events you want to encourage and which ones you don't. When you can look at these obstacles that keep coming up in the mind in that light, then it's a lot easier to pull yourself away from them and to get down to business.